We have a situation where an unprecedented five candidates are vying for the presidency of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Football Federation. Incumbent Carl Dixon will be challenged by former President Marvin Fraser, current Vice President Otashi Spring and Wayne Grant, along with former national player and senior men's team manager Renson Haynes. Now, the elections were rescheduled from last November to early this year after FIFA recommended constitutional changes be adopted before a new executive council is in place. Now, following a visit to the Islands Federation, FIFA's chief member associations officer, Kenny Jean-Marie, insisted that the recommended guidelines for new statutes and a revised electoral code be completed by the end of 2023. Now, with that process seemingly complete, the elections are set for this Saturday in uh, the capital, Kingstown. Searchlight writer Rowan Thomas has been tracking this story and he now joins us via Zoom to discuss uh, this issue. Well, let me start here, uh, Rowan. Great to have you on the Sports Mac Zone. And I see where the processes outlined by FIFA, or our script says, um, are seemingly complete. Can you say categorically that it, it's not seemingly complete, but that it is complete? Thank you very much for having me. It's not my first time. I've been on Sportsmax a few times before and um, a few years ago. And it's one of my favorite shows. I'm, in fact, um, a big Anik Gan fan. I'm a junglist. Oh, you are? So, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> anyway, to the meat of the matter, um, basically, yes and no, because um, there's not been a definitive word from the Secretary as to Saturday's meeting. But if you follow the trends um, that has, in fact, the roadmap as laid down by the SBGFF and the Secretariat, we were supposed to have the um, final notification of the um, of the Congress last on the 11th. That has not um, been, we have, the affiliates have not been notified. And the declaration of the candidates was supposed to be on the 12th. That was, um, well, that's the nomination, sorry, of the candidates was on the 12th. Mm -hmm. That was um, released. But the integrity check was supposed to be on the 16th, with the 19th being the date for the um, dissemination of those candidates who are eligible. Um, as we... As the story develops, we see that on the 19th, which is three days after the integrity check, was supposed to be the declaration. Today is the 22nd, and we have not heard a word from the Secretariat as to what has happened to the, to the integrity checks. And if you notice that there are three-day span between the integrity check as well as the inf informing affiliates of the candidates. So which means we can hazard a guess that that has not been done. Affiliates have not been notified of the um, of who constitute the, the the electoral commission, plus um, the candidates. After the integrity checks, they have I think there's a three-day period to appeal. Those have not been in place. So um, I'm just basing on conjecture and the way the trends are taking place. Uh, unfolding that the elections may not take place this Saturday. May not. Can, can you may backtrack not. briefly, though, Ruan, on the integrity check? Because I'd seen it a, a few weeks ago that for the first time, integrity checks will precede um, the process of, of these elections. What, what are these integrity checks about overall? And uh, why was this approach used? Well, it's, as you said before, that FIFA, uh, um, they are on a path of redoing some of the MAs constitutions which and the statutes, which have been some uh, AK to some extent. So I think the integrity checks are for basically persons who may have run afoul of maybe FIFA, maybe 
um, even personal um, or civil matters and so on. Mm. So that is, has been one of the, 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 the burning issues in terms of um, going forward in terms of the, this present electoral process. But you're suggesting, Rowan, that nothing has been heard about these integrity checks. Um, does well, that... it, well, well, what happened? The candidates' uh -huh. nominations were filled. Yes. They were, um, the 12th was the um, set date for nominations. The release was made of the candidates, the 33 candidates. But the, the integrity checks were to be done on the 16th. Nothing has been done. Nothing, I don't mean I say nothing has been done. Nothing has been revealed as yes. to who candidates are, who have passed, who have failed, and so on. So, but to go back to your first question, yeah. um, the, the, that has been a, a, it has been a new phenomenon in terms of having background checks on, on candidates. So it's, it's new. Yeah, I, I recognize that. And, and the overall question, too, we, we ask, I've never seen in any Caribbean football union territory where as many as five candidates are going, going in a presidential election. Um, how is the football fraternity in St. Vincent and the Grenadines um, em embracing such, such a number vying for one spot? It, it's almost unheard of, isn't it? Well, as you said quite rightly, said it's unprecedented. It's not normal for five persons to to be there. But what is interesting is that there are two current um, VPs: the first vice president, Mr. Otashi Spring, as well as Mr. Um, Wayne Grant, the second VP. He is both are going against the current or the sitting president, Mr. Carl Dixon. And we have a former president who served as a, for 15 months after the ban of uh, Mr. Coombs. He is in the, in the race, as well as Renson Haynes, as some persons may know him from um, the Vincey Heat fame and so on. And he was also a, a former national player. Yeah. And even the youth level as well. So it's unprecedented, but I think it's, that's the way the democracy works. And it is... <laughs> It, it, it makes for interesting reading. Right. Rohan, you know, um, in Jamaica, I could speak for Jamaica because I've lived here now for approximately five years. And, well, I can speak about Trinidad and Tobago because it's where I um, was born and raised. When there is an election, and, of course, a football election, there is a lot of heat on the ground, of course, you know, a lot of controversy, a lot of articles, a lot of information coming to hand. And the thing about it is... Even if the information is not um, present or available, people ask. They want to know because this involves, of course, um, the sport of the country that a lot of people look forward to and they enjoy. It also involves a lot of money. What's the atmosphere? I know Lance mentioned it, but I want to get a bit more from you. What's the atmosphere like, one, seeing that the elections didn't happen in December? Now we're in January and we're not sure if it will happen Come Saturday. I think the majority of the population wants it over and done with because we have not been able to play football at the national level for some time since last. But basically, the, the premiership finished sometime in April of last year, and we've not been able to have that premiership um, played. Um, there's other issues, but I think affiliates as well as the business people, everybody wants it done with. And as you quite rightly said, it's it's really the game of the people. It's it's the only election in the country, apart from national elections, that the masses get involved. Get involved because they want to know who will be the next president. Because football is the most popular sport here. Um, I think the delay we may just cause a bit more agitation as to what will eventually happen whenever it is called, but you, to say that we are not into it will be, be, be wrong because okay. the radio programs are flooded with um, calls, the sports programs are flooded with calls, and everybody is dealing with the matter of football. Right. And the last election was in November 2019, right? Yes, yes. Uh, 
Right. And, you know, if you had to rate the current administration to where we are now, we're in, you know, it's years later, of course, you know, we're looking forward to more football and to seeing St. Vincent and Grenadines football on the highest level. How would you rate the years gone by from 2019 to now? Well, you have to take into account a couple of factors. One, we the COVID situation, the, we had a double bluff, uh, a double blow, I should say, not a double bluff, but a double blow in terms of the, the volcano in 21. But set aside that, there have been some infrastructural development um, and promises of infrastructural development. But I think what Vincentians are really looking at is the our senior team, mainly our Vincent Heat team, and its progress and its um, the way it matches up against others in the Caribbean. That has not been to the best in the past four years, I must say. But um, we are seeing some signs of improvement. We are seeing some. We had a, a new technical director being um, in place from 2021, or 2022. Sorry. Um, but that doesn't mean. I think people look at the game or they assess the game based on what is on the field, not necessarily the infrastructure and what goes on administratively. That is what people assess the game as. Yeah, from, Rohan, from that standpoint. Yeah, Rohan, in terms of the unprecedented number of candidates for the presidency of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Football Federation. I suspect the reason we are in this position is because the body voted not to have slates. Um, and so therefore you end up with a situation where independent individuals and as, as far as the presidency post goes, five of those have thrown their hats in the ring, but I suspect for other executive positions, it will be the same as well. And as far as I understand it, this goes against the recommendation from FIFA. Um, and the, this recommendation from FIFA is the recommendation that they would give to all their member federations. Can you give us some insight as to why um, the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Football Association would have voted not to go um, slates um, and and the fallout from that essentially can you talk us through that well in um, that's a, 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 a issue that has been ventilated in at meetings however um, what we have at teams it does not translate you may say slate but um, it have teams that they are basically running teams or candidates with in, in a particular behind a particular um president and they have it but the thing about slates you know slates can be good they can be bad they can be indifferent depends on on what because i think people are looking at getting the best persons in maybe some persons from a team may have the best set of persons but to say a slate per se i don't think that um Personally, that's me. I, I don't think we're ready for, because I guess the slate is you win one, you win all. Yeah. Isn't but, it potentially, though, isn't it potentially um, harmful, chaotic to the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Football Federation if you have um, a number of different individuals from different teams ending up on the executive body and you potentially run into a situation where these different individuals have different goals, different philosophies, different ideas about how the football is to go forward in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Isn't that potentially more harmful, more chaotic for the Federation and for football in the country? Well, to be if you look at the history of football, it has always been that case because we have we have never we had a just in recent times we start having teams of persons um, having nominated candidates for each position. It will work if you if if you have the, the persons of the same team being elected. But um we can assure you that persons who are there would um 
once elected will work. That's only a case of personality. I, I, that's my, my candid view. It's a case of personality. They may have difference of opinion, but at the end of the day, it would be affiliates who will vote for them based on their, their, um, what they put forward in their manifestos, what they put forward um, individually, and one-on-one -on -one meetings with the, with the affiliates. It can work in once we have like mine, once persons have the interest of football at heart, it can work because it's not a clear cut to say, well, okay, an entire slate may, may win. It may happen, it may not happen, but we have to work because we are all in the development of football. St. Vincent and Grenadines. Yeah, quickly, in, in 20 seconds, um, do you have an understanding of why FIFA um, would want it this way and would be making the recommendation to their member federations go slate? Because I, 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 that's what I am looking at. They, they think that they, they, they want the best in terms of cohesion, the persons who you, you kind of work with for the same interpersonal reasons where that um, may have plagued other um, MAs before. So I think it's all along that line, FIFA may be thinking that, okay, you, you elect and you elect your, your a slate so that you can work with the persons who, who um, you, can, you, you feel comfortable working with and who have the skill sets and acumen to work with. Yeah, right, Ron, we're going to leave it there, but I just want to get from you very quickly. Is there a favorite for the presidential race? You say there are a lot of uh, radio talk shows going on and so on. Do you get a sense of uh, from the public who they think would be the best person to win? Well, there, there's not a clear cut because there are 53 affiliates. If you look at um, their shifts, there may be shifts, maybe once it's time, they, they will shift in, um, in... Who, who in do a, you think allegiance. will win? Who do you think will win? To be honest, I, I, I can't hazard a guess because it's, it's a bit too close to call. Between who? Among, I think everybody goes in with a, with a, with a clear, <laughs> with a, with a um, fair choice. All right, Ron, we, we're going to leave it there, but we'll be in touch throughout the week because, as you said at the top, we're not 100% sure this election will go up, so we'll be in touch yes. to talk about that. Thanks, Rowan Thomas. Thank from you. Thank Searchlight you. newspaper in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Back with more on The Zone after this.